Have you ever said, how much easier would it be if everyone just told the truth all the time? You said this and it doesn't mean that. Why would you lie to me saying that it's three o'clock when it's 2.58? Welcome to this month's Patron's Choice video. And our topic today is why do people lie to me? So I started jotting some notes down about this and it's quickly turning into a full on thesis. So I'm gonna try and go through um, what I've got so far in reasonably quick su succession. So um, I'm gonna make some graphics so you don't need to actually see, these are just notes for myself. Um, but I'm going to outline a couple of different ways that people lie um, because what I've noticed, I, I know I do this and I've seen other Aspies do this, because we can be a little bit black and white sometimes and we like to define things in really clear categories, sometimes we lump all of these things into the one category of lying and that, that makes it harder for us to understand what's going on. Um, so the first thing that we talk about with lying is deliberately, maliciously um, giving someone the wrong information. So trying to trick them, trying to manipulate them, um, and that is a form of power because information is power and if I give you the wrong information, then you're going to um, make, the, make a less good decision and that could potentially benefit me. So that's kind of what we typically think of about lying but there are actually lots of other things that can sometimes seem like that, but are actually something quite different. So um, I wanna really contrast between that kind of lying and pretending, projecting an image, omitting information, refusing to tell you something, and using language in the wrong way. So if we start with the first one, pretending is kind of like lying, isn't it? Because I'm not being genuine, I'm putting on an act, I'm putting on a mask, I am projecting an image, which is actually the second one which we'll come to in a minute, I'm trying to be a different person in a particular situation. And I know that I've done this a lot in my life, and it's because instead of being authentic to myself, I'm doing and saying and wearing things that I know other people want me to wear because it's socially appropriate for, for whatever reason. So um, interestingly, people on the spectrum are often very good at this. We're often good at acting and wearing a mask and mimicry and things like that. And when other people do that, sometimes we get upset by that because they're not being genuine and when we realize they're not being genuine it triggers this sort of violation of the honesty why were you why were you lying to me so a couple of reasons that we pretend we might pretend to ourselves because we would prefer to believe a different thing i might pretend to be happy when i'm not actually feeling very good or i might pretend to be confident when i'm actually really not confident at all and that image and mask and performance gets shown to others because sometimes it's, it's nice when others think that I'm happy, I get less questions about why are you depressed all the time. Well, actually, a really good one for me is about being tired. I'm tired a lot of the time and I have to pretend that I'm not tired. Otherwise, I get so many questions. Why are you try it, tired? Have you tried this? Have you tried this? And I just don't want any of that. So. That's one of the reasons I pretend sometimes. So another uh, way is when we project an image, and this is like giving a half truth. My analogy for this is, it's like, like a Rubik's cube, right? Is it red or is it yellow or is it blue? It's actually all of these things depending on which side you're looking at at a particular time. So the question for this is, do you show all of yourself all of the time? And that's kind of rhetorical because I'm speaking to a camera, but it's impossible to show all of ourselves all of the time, which means that in any given moment, we have to choose which image we project. 
And sometimes that can feel like a half truth because it seemed like this person was really confident, but they were actually faking, for example. Um, so another way that sometimes feels like lying is when people omit information. So a similar question for this is, is it possible to say everything that you want to say? Is it possible to say everything that you need to about a particular um, thing, right? There is so much detail that for the purposes of, of efficient communication, I have to assume some things that you're automatically going to understand. I'm not going to stop mid-sentence and start defining every word that I use, for example. I'm going to have, there's some kind of assumed knowledge there. So while it's definitely possible to omit information in a way that's deliberately designed to trick someone, just because there was a misunderstanding because we assumed the wrong thing does not necessarily mean that that um, omission of information was deliberately designed to manipulate us or trick us because we have to assume things all the time. So another one that was a really big thing for me um, because I actually believe in transparency. I believe it would be so much easier. How, have you ever said, how much easier would it be if everyone just told the truth all the time? I know that has been um, something that I've thought from time to time. And I get really angry when people refuse to tell me things that would, would really help me. But actually, something I've realized recently is that it's a degree of privacy that you can't force people to tell you the truth. And that kind of sounds a bit counterintuitive at first because we talk about honesty as if it should be something that we apply all the time. But I can't force someone to tell me something about themselves. I can't force someone to tell me anything. So if someone refuses to tell me something, that's because that information is private. And I'll give you a um, example or an, an analogy to understand what I mean by private privacy. Um, I'm wearing clothes at the moment, right? Now, in a way, I am masking my body, so you can't see my body. All you can see is the clothes on the outside. Um, it's not really a secret that I'm doing that. You can clearly see that I'm wearing a jacket and you can't see what's underneath. If you know anything about human anatomy, you can probably have a pretty good guess of what's underneath, but that's kind of beside the point. It's not about the knowledge of what's underneath. It's about how much we openly show in any given situation. So there are some situations where it's socially appropriate to be naked, for example. There are some relationships where it's socially appropriate to, to see each other naked. And there are some where if that happened, you'd be like, okay, this is a bit weird. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Um, so I guess the, the point of that analogy is to emphasize that how much you tell people and how honest you be in any given situation depends on the situation and depends on the relationship. Um, that you have with that person and how much is appropriate to share. So um, a question I had for this to ask you is, do you have any secrets? Do you have any, is there any information that if others knew, they could use it against you? Right? That's why we keep secrets because if I told everybody, then some of that information could be used against me. So I'm trying to protect myself in a way by not telling everybody everything all the time. Okay, um, now this last one is a, is a very stereotypical Aspie thing to do and it's to get hung up on the language when people use language in the wrong way. So um, I know I definitely have a preference for when people use language literally and when people are really inaccurate with language, that can sometimes bug me because I said, but you said this and it doesn't mean that. And I can get really hung up on that sometimes, especially when I was little, I would say things like to my parents, you said this, which means this, and now you're doing this, which is different to what you said. 
And from their point of view, they were just being a little bit sloppy with their language. They were using it a little bit inaccurately. Um, and a really good example is I used to get upset with the time. Like when I learned to tell the time, I'd ask my parents, what's the time? And they'd say three o'clock. And then I would look at the time, I'd say, it's not three o'clock, it's 2.58. Why are you lying to me? Why would you lie to me saying that it's three o'clock when it's 2.58? So clearly in their mind, they rounded and it's roughly three o'clock. And so that's what they were communicating to me. But I couldn't understand why someone would be inaccurate when we have digital clocks these days. I could understand when you have an analog clock and you say, oh, it's roughly three o'clock because it's hard to be too accurate. But for a digital clock, it says 258, 258. Surely you could just relay that information to me. So I was getting very upset, but I thought I was getting upset because they were lying and trying to trick me or manipulate me or give me the wrong information. Whereas actually I was getting upset because they were being less accurate than I wanted them to be. So it really helps to understand why certain behavior can make me feel upset. So um, a question for you to, to reflect on this one is, have you ever been misunderstood? Have you ever said something or done something that was taken in the wrong way, you know, in a way that you completely did not intend? Whose fault was that? Was that 100% your fault for not being clear in your communication? Or was it 100% their fault for not listening to you properly and you were trying to say this and they should have done a better job trying to listen to you, right? The answer is that communication and understanding is always a two-way street and it can't be blamed on any one of the parties. If there is a misunderstanding, it's because there was a gap somewhere and the two people need to work on better understanding each other. Um, okay, well, might leave it there, but this has been uh, an attempt to be really quick about why do people lie to me and some of the reasons that people lie. Um, if you would like to have your say in next month's Patron's Choice video, you can uh, become a cup of coffee supporter of this channel for less than a dollar a week. So if you're in a position to support this channel with a small financial contribution, that would be a great way to help me to keep making these kind of free resources. So if you'd like to do that, that would be greatly appreciated. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you another time. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for weekly content just like this one. If you'd like to get even more involved, you can join the discussion on social media or support me by becoming a patron. Finally, I value your time and you'll notice all my videos are ad-free, so please help me to cover what you want to hear by leaving me a comment and telling me what you think. So thanks for watching and I'll see you another time.